Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, private channel, one word, Dwyer Boxing. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Mick Alcastler destroyed Brian McGee last weekend. But, you know, the Carl Frotch people who are looking forward to a rematch with Mikhail Kessler really shouldn't take too much from Kessler's victory because the victory was really specifically tailored to his opponent just like just as an aside Ricky Burns's victory over Kevin Mitchell was specifically tailored to Kevin Mitchell in that fight Ricky Burns knew he could land a high right hand right here Mikael Kessler knew from the Lucien Butte film that Brian McGee was vulnerable to the body. And Kessler, surprisingly, against the lefty, you know how they say, throw straight rights, was able to land straight rights repeatedly to Brian McGee's body. Right? That resulted in two knockdowns in the second round, and McGee really being a bit gun shy and beaten up with no answers whatsoever on how to stop Kessler from landing that straight right hand to his body. Kessler even because of it is able to land a left hook to Brian McGee's um, ribs but don't be fooled everything keys off of Kessler's ability and Kessler's right handed to land that straight right to the body. You know McGee quite frankly stands too straight right he doesn't operate out of a crouch the reason why fighters will bend forward like Sergio Martinez right he'll bend forward or will come in with a side profile like Carl Frotch is to defensively hide their bodies right you can't get to let's say a Sergio Martinez in a crouch because Martinez is fighting low and you have to reach across him to try to hit his body certainly his body is not open for straight right hands like Brian McGee's was right also it's very hard to hit a Mayweather or a Carl Frotch guys who come in at a side profile because number one their body's over here so you're not hitting the body with anything straight also, they have this hand draped across their body. So they're actually wearing body armor, right? So you're going to have a hard time throwing a right hand through the guy's hand to hit a body that's off at the side, right? And so I know Kessler looked dramatic hitting McGee, who's standing like this. He's standing straight, and he's not bent. There's no bend. He's not in a crouch and he's not bouncing. No, he's standing straight. He's standing upright. His body's exposed. So Brian McGee tries to get going. But once Kessler starts landing that straight right to the body, Brian McGee has no answers. Because keep in mind, McGee's entire career is spent standing up. It's not like he's suddenly now going to learn Carl Frotch's style or work behind a bounce where his body is hard to find. Let me also point out too, as you look at the film, one of the criticisms I have of Mikael Kessler, I believe it cost him against Andre Ward, is he doesn't really move well laterally. He strikes me as a guy on rails. He moves in and out this way, right? I'll put my hands like this. He doesn't really move to the sides, right? Nor does Brian McGee, right? Brian McGee is standing in front of him. He's an offensive problem when he comes in and he's able to land headshots, right? But he's not a guy who's going to be moving and hiding parts of his body. And so as you look at the tape, what I want you to do is to look at the second round that's when Kessler stops trying to throw 
a left hand under Southpaw McGee's right hand, right? And that's when Kessler just starts loading up on straight rights to the body. And what I want you to do is to just look at the rest of Kessler's game because he's not going to be able to land that straight right hand to the body against Carl Froch, right? He didn't in the first fight. He's not going to be able to in the rematch, right? And so this really, don't get me wrong, it's a big win for Kessler. No question about it. But it's a win that doesn't translate against the Carl Froch, who's not going to be standing straight like this, but who's going to be standing like this, and who's going to be waving a jab. Froch has a pretty good jab. He's going to be waving a jab at Kessler's face, making it hard for Kessler to reach him. Keep in mind, too, Kessler's throwing straight right hands. If a guy has a side profile, right, you're not going to be able to land a straight right to the body. It would have to be a right hook, right? And so, um, you know, food for thought. I think it's a big win by Kessler. Kessler, quite frankly, looked better than I thought he was going to. But I just don't see where it would translate against the Carl Froch. And let me just point out, too, for those thinking of the biggest names at Super Middle, it certainly doesn't translate against a Andre Ward. Um, it's interesting. Kessler claimed that Andre Ward won his fight by headbutts and stuff like that. The truth is that Andre Ward has a whole nother dynamic that Kessler cannot keep up with and that's movement, lateral movement, coupled with an ability when Ward wants to, to jump inside and rough you up inside. Right here, Brian McGee is relatively immobile and he stands straight like this, not a side profile, but a front profile. His body was wide open. This wasn't the first fight that Brian McGee lost on body punches. Look at the work Carl Froch did to McGee's body when they fought. Look at the work Lucien Butte did to McGee's body when they fought. And if you're going to focus on one punch and looking at the film of the Kessler fight, and I've put the film up on my channel page here on YouTube, just focus on Kessler's straight right hand. By the way, McGee is so square to him that Kessler is even able to throw that straight right across McGee's body to hit McGee, believe it or not, on McGee's right side. Food for thought. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Let me also say too, you know, I mentioned the Ricky Burns Mitchell fight. Right? What I want people to do is to realize those guys sparred before they fought. Right? They were friends from back in the day. In fact, they were friends after the fight. Right? Boxing is a strategy sport. If you know that a guy is vulnerable to a certain punch. I'll give you another example. Juan Manuel Marquez throwing uppercuts against Juan Diaz in their first fight. If you figure out that a guy is vulnerable to a certain punch and you can literally unveil that punch against the guy, that doesn't mean, in my opinion, that you can use that strategy against other world-class competition. Carl Froch is very hard to hit in the body, right? It's very hard to hit Carl Froch in the body, right? You can't look at Kessler's body attack against a guy with a style completely contrary to Carl Froch's and feel that Kessler can employ that strategy against Carl Froch. That's not the way boxing works, in my opinion. Let me hear yours. Leave your comments for me here online and, of course, visit us both here on YouTube at gamblersadvisory.com as well as on Roku. Thanks for watching.